Now there's a device that we can use to measure waves called a cathode ray oscilloscope. The screen of such an oscilloscope looks something like this. And what this does, it shows how an electrical signal changes over time. And so how do we apply this to waves? Well, we simply translate the wave into an electrical wave. Because remember, we can change the form of energy that the wave is transmitting. So the cathode ray oscilloscope, or the CRO, tends to display the intensity of the wave over time. So what we need to do is find a way that we can translate the intensity of sound energy to intensity of electrical energy. And it turns out there's a device that's perfect for that, and it is called, of course, a microphone. So if we connect a microphone to a cathode ray tube, then that will turn sound waves into electrical waves, and the cathode ray oscilloscope will be able to tell us things like the period or the frequency or the amplitude of the sound wave. A wave is plotted on an oscilloscope over 0.6 seconds and produces a trace looking something like this. Find its wavelength. Now what we're given here is position and voltage, right? So we're looking at a freeze frame after 0.6 seconds and we're given this wave. That means that we can find its wavelength by measuring the distance between two successive crests or two points in the same pattern of the wave, like these points here. Can, we, can you see why that works? At both these points, uh, the wave is at its maximum slope and we're at the same part of the pattern. We're heading up toward a crest. So these two parts of the wave are identical. The other two parts of the wave that we could look at are this part and this part, for example. So in both of these cases, we're halfway through, heading down from a crest to a trough. And in both cases, of course, the wavelength is going to have to be the same. And we can see pretty easily that that's going to be one centimeter. All right, calculate its period. This will be a little bit harder. So to calculate its period, we'll have to know what's given to us in the uh, part of the question here. So the wave is plotted over 0.6 seconds. And in that time, we get one and a half whole wavelengths. Got it? So that means that over 0.6 seconds, we get 1.5 wavelengths. And if we want to find its period, then we need to figure out how long it would take for just one wavelength to go by. So essentially what we need to do uh, is take 0.6 and divide it by 1.5 and then multiply it by one wavelength. So 0.6 over 1.5 will give us the time that it takes for a single wavelength to travel across instead of one and a half wavelengths to travel across. And that of course will just give us 0.4 seconds, which is two thirds of our original value. We can see in this trace that two thirds of the trace will be one whole wavelength. Find the frequency. Well, now that we have the period, the frequency will be pretty easy to find. That'll simply be 1 over 0.4, which gives us 2.5. That means that every second, two and a half wavelengths will pass through a particular point. Finally, find its velocity. Now, how would we go about doing that? Well, we can use V equals F lambda. Our frequency is 2.5, and our lambda wavelength is one centimeter, which of course is equal to one hundredth of a meter if we're using SI units. So we take one hundredth, we multiply it by 2.5, and what do we get? Well, we get, of course, 0.025 meters per second, which is the same as 2.5 centimeters per second. 